uh, this was asked in CBSC 2002. So you have two lenses. So first part is correct. Your second is correct. Now just need position and size of the image. For size of the image, what you will do? Just get the value of M. Calculate magnification. See your object distance is minus 30. Na? And you said your image distance comes out to be 15. So magnification is V by U, not U by V. It's 15 by minus 30. It comes out to be minus half, right? Okay, now calculate the height of the image. The height of the object is 3 centimeters. Now just try to calculate the height of the image. How much is the height of the image? So there's no need for me to solve this numerical, right? You have already solved it. Okay. Just one last numerical. Huh? It's, a, it's a bit lengthy numerical, but this is a solid example of NCRT. So one should never skip this thing. So you have one convex lens. This have a focal length of 10 centimeter. Then add some separation, let's say some 5 centimeter from the lens, you put another concave lens. So the formula that we have used for the combination of lens cannot be used here. The formula that we have used for the combination is valid only if you have lenses placed back to back. If lenses have some separation, then you cannot use that formula. So this is your object. This object is placed at 30 centimeter from the lens. So this is your F1, this is your F2, which is minus 10 centimeter. This is your F3, which is plus 30 centimeter. So for this numerical, you have just have to calculate the position of image. For lens one, U1 is minus 30 centimeter, right? Your focal length is 10 centimeter. Get the value of V1. Tell me how much is V1. Okay, so V1 comes out to be plus 15 centimeter. Very good. So this is your object O1. 15 centimeter means from the optical center of the lens, it's 15 centimeter. 15 centimeter is here. That means your first image will be here. That's I1. Okay. So this I1 will basically act as an object for the second lens. For this second lens L2, lens 2, for this lens 2, this is your image. Oh, sorry, this is your object. So can you tell me how much is the object distance for the second lens? How much is this distance? This one. From the first lens, this is U1. Not U1, sorry. V1, which is 15 centimeter. Ah, Jumaya now, 35. See, from here to here, it's 15 centimeter. I'm asking this thing, this is U2. How much is this distance? Yes, 10 centimeter. For lens 2, your object distance is, and this is positive. Because you are moving in the direction of light. This is positive. This is positive distance, U2. So you have U2, your focal length is minus 10 centimeter. Tell me how much is V2 now, first. 1 by V2 minus 1 by U2 is 1 by F2. I need V2, which is 1 by F2 plus 1 by U2. 1 by V2 is 1 by F2. F2 is minus 10. 1 by U2 is plus 1 by 10. Gets cancelled out. See, 1 by V2 is 0. V2 is 1 by 0, which is infinite. V2 is infinite. Which means lens become parallel to the principal axis. Now let's start with lens 3. If I draw the ray diagram here, so the ray diagram says 
this is your ray it's going here it refract and after it refraction it would have meet over this point if second lens have not refracted it but it's passing through the second lens the so second lens will refract it and after refraction it becomes parallel this is your lens rays now now you have to decide what will happen to with this ray when it pass through the third lens for third lens your u3 so the rays is coming from infinity that means for third lens your object distance is infinity your focal length of the third lens is 30 cm can you calculate how much is v3 for the third lens 1 by v3 minus 1 by u3 is 1 by f3 so if i put these values it's 1 by v3 minus 1 by infinity is 1 by 30 when you solve this you get v3 is 30 cm that means your final image will be here at 30 cm from this lens so that's your final image formation so if your lenses are not placed back to back they have some separations then you cannot use that 1 by f equal to is 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 at all you have to use lens formula for each of the individual lenses. so after doing lens formula the next thing that we will do is Mm. optical instrument so refraction is over the next is optical instrument then we will do prism so you had following four optical instrument in your slavers first eye then you have simple microscope simple microscope then you have compound microscope then you have telescope now out of these four uh, instruments the eye is not a part of slabers now you just have to do simple microscope compound microscope and telescope see eye is not a part of slabers now but for doing all instrument you should know some basic thing about eye so in a eye from the point of view of ray optics two things are important the first one is lens your eye lens your eye lens is basically a convex lens having variable focal length the focal length of the eye lens can vary so it's a convex lens it is a convex lens having variable focal length it is a convex lens having variable focal length the focal length of the eye lens can vary after eye lens <coughs> you can have another lens which is another thing not the lens which is retina retina is basically the point in the eye where the Im image formation takes place this is a point where the image formation takes place if you rays from the object meet at the retina after the after refraction from the eye lens then your eye is correct your eye lens does not have any defect but if rays coming from the object after refracting from the eye meets Inst instead of retina it meet in the front of retina or at the back end of retina then the eye is defected that means there are some defect of vision which are known as myopia hypermetropia i'm sure you have done this in class 9th or 10th maybe it's those defect of vision are not a part of the slabers you just have to know that there is one lens in the eye which is known as eye lens this eye lens is a convex lens this convex lens have a variable focal length then you should know the near point and the far point near point is the closest distance from the eye at which if you place your object you can see the image so near point is the closest
डिस्टेंस ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम आर इज नोन एज नियर पॉइंट एंड दैट नियर पॉइंट इज it's due to change in the focal length but once you place a spec spec means another lens in front of the eye lens then the overall focal length of the system will change you know that the net focal length is 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 due to the change in focal length the power will change your d is 25 cm means 25 cm is the closest distance at which you can view an object for a normal eye if you place a object at 25 cm you can view it but if you bring this object closer than 25 cm then it's not clearly visible so the minimum distance at which you can place an object for the clear view is 25 cm this is the closest distance for a normal eye then there is one far point for this distance of object from eye for this distance of object from eye and that is basically infinity that distance is infinity that's infinity so for a normal eye you should remember you should remember these two distances the near point which is 25 cm the closest distance from the eye at which you can see the clear image of the object and the far far point means the farthest point that you can view clearly from your eye is almost at infinity see in these instruments we are not supposed to calculate magnification we are supposed to calculate angular magnification in optical instruments we don't really calculate magnification we calculate angular magnification we'll see what is angular magnification but first of all see what do you mean by simple microscope simple microscope is just a convex lens basically uh, in library you must have seen the reading glass the reading glass is a single lens which is basically a simple microscope which is used to magnify the size of the object simple microscope is a convex lens having small focal length used to magnify object now in simple microscope you will come across two cases in one case your final image is obtained at least distance of distinct vision in another case your final image is at infinity jibana what do you mean by least distance of distinct vision if i say your final image is obtained at least distance of distinct vision what does it mean least distance of distinct vision means this distance 25 cm 25 cm this is also known as least distance for distribution least distance for distribution <clears throat> so let's start with the case one huh? object at least distance of distinct vision so this is your lens this is your convex lens this 
this is the optical center of the lens this is the focus of the lens what i did is i place an object in between the optical center and the focus this is my objective this is my objective so what this lens will do <clears throat> see this is one ray which is passing through the optical center of the lens the ray passing through the optical center will pass through the lens without any deflection this is the another ray right this is the second ray which is going parallel to the principal axis after refraction through the lens this ray will diverge this ray will diverge so these two rays are diverging they will not meet on the other side so there is no chances of a real image but what will happen if you produce them in the backward direction if you produce them in the backward direction here if you produce them in the backward direction then they will appear to meet at a point huh? they will appear to meet at a point they will appear to meet at a point so this is dotted this is not the actual direction the rays are moving in this direction i am extra plotting it i am plotting it in the backward direction it appear to meet over this point so you will get a image here okay can you tell me what type of image is this is it a real image or a virtual image what type of image is this yes it's a virtual image a prime b prime and you want your virtual image at a distance d from the optical center of the lens basically what happened we don't take all distances from the lens we actually take all distances from the eye we always take distances from the eye we take all distances from the eye from the eye this distance is d which is roughly 25 feet we always write we are taking distances from the eye but eye and lens are very close so if you take distance from the eye or from the lens that the same thing throughout the optical instrument i will always draw distances with respect to lens and in theory i will write that i am taking distances with the eye the thing is i and lens are very very close i and lens are very close So you can take distance from lens, and you can say that I am taking it from the eye. You can approximate it. Okay, so this is the size of the image. <clears throat> this is your object, and this is your image. So your image size is this. Now you want to compare. You want to compare the size of the image when you are using lens. and when you are not using lens when you are viewing this object through the naked eye so basically what you can say is you can say that this is my eye i am not using any lens now i place my object here at the same distance d from the eye and yes this is the size of my object when this is the size of the object when there is no lens when i am viewing the object with my naked eye the size of the object is this when i am viewing my object with the lens the size of the object is this because you want to compare right you want to compare how much your lens have magnified your image so what you will do you will first see your object from the naked naked eye means without your lens then you will see the object with the lens 
then only you can differentiate how much your lens is magnifying so i'm using this this diagram this is only i this is i there's no lens so this is the size of the object and this is the size your image when you are using a lenses no we don't deal with the heights here we are not interested in the heights we are rather instead interested in angle means this is your image this image is subtending some angle alpha over the optical center i'm interested in this angle this angle basically represents the size of the whole image this angle is important similarly here this object will extend some some angle over the eye i call this angle as beta i call this as beta so alpha and beta are angles basically and these angles basically represents the size of the image and the object alpha uh, as this this the six i just change the name the angle subtended by the object we represent it by alpha and the angle subtended by image we represent it by beta so this is your object <clears throat> when there is no i this distance is also d this is your image when you are viewing this image through the lens here you are viewing this object with the naked eye so we need angular magnification we need to calculate angular magnification also. so you can say that angular magnification is ratio of angle subtended by image and object on i when both image and object are at least distance of distance and both image and object are at least distance image and object are at least distance means object before introducing lens and image after introducing lens. So to calculate them, what we can do is uh, let's call this as E. This point is E. First, I need this tan phi. You can say tan phi is AB by your ED. So you can say in triangle ABE tan phi. Uh, just a second. I represent angular magnification with capital M. Which comes out to be its beta by alpha. That's equation number one. So you can say that tan alpha is almost equal to alpha, which is AB divided by EB. That's second equation. This AB divided by EB is your tan alpha. Similarly, you can calculate tan beta. For tan beta, I'm using this triangle. It's A prime B prime O. this is in triangle abe and our here i am using triangle a prime b prime o in a prime b prime o i can write that tan beta is almost equal to beta it's basically small angle approximation which is a prime b prime by ob prime that's equation number 3 okay there is one small issue here instead of a prime b prime Oh, I can also use AB, right? This is my object distance. This is my object distance. So for this beta, I can use both the triangles. See, I can use A prime B prime O, or I can use ABO. I'm using ABO here. 
this will just reduce the number of steps in the calculations i am using abo when i use abo instead of a prime b prime we will just need ab ab by ob ob these two steps are clear step number 2 and step number 3 Now, just substitute 2 and 3 in 1. When you substitute 2 and 3 in 1, what you will get is M, angular magnification, which is beta. Beta is AB by OB divided by alpha. How much is alpha? It's AB by EB. See, AB will cancel this AB and your M comes out to be it's EB by OB now. Now, how much is EB? EB is minus of D. E to B, how much is EB? It's minus of D. How much is OB? OB is minus of U. If you substitute these values here, you will get it's minus of D by minus U. So M is D by U. You can leave your result here, but it's better if you can convert this in terms of focal length. It's always good if you can convert these things in terms of focal length. So for focal length, what we can do is we can just use lens formula. Lens formula says 1 by V minus 1 by U is 1 by F. I call this as equation number 4. I'm trying to calculate 1 by U here. Your U is minus U. It's a sign convention. V is minus D. Your image is at least distance of distinct vision. This is your image distance, basically. And yes, it's a convex lens. So focal length is always positive. If I do all these substitutions, I will get 1 by minus V plus 1 by u. Since this is minus of u, I'm putting u with a negative sign. So minus minus will be plus is 1 by f. So what I will get is I will get that 1 by u is 1 by f plus 1 by d. That is equation number 3. This is my equation number 4. If I substitute 4 and 3, what I will get is M is D into 1 by F plus 1 by D. If I multiply the whole term with D, it comes out to be it's D by F plus 1. So this is the angular magnification for a simple microscope and your final image is at least distance of distinct vision. Just, just make a small correction here. It's not object, it's image. Huh? It's image. So your image is not at least distance. Your image, in the second case, your image is at infinity. Second case. The first case was when image is at least distance. Second case is when your image is at infinity. See, just a very small mo modification. Now, your object is placed at the focus. We are just placing your object at the focus. So, what we can do is just remove it, remove it. Yes, Jubaina, just tell me, when your final image is at infinity, for what position of the object your rays meet at infinity? If you place your object at the focus, then after refraction, rays becomes parallel. If your object is placed at focus, then after refraction, rays becomes parallel. They will meet at infinity. So your object distance is equal to focal length now. That's it. The, the rest of the things are same. The difference in the derivation is angular magnification ratio of angles obtained by image and object on the eye. When image, now just a small difference. Here. When image is at infinity and object at least distance of distance. An object at least distance of distinct vision. 
so there is just small change up to here everything is fine everything is fine now your ob is f you don't need rest of the calculations it's d by f d by f so that is your final answer m is d by f only when your final image is at infinity the last thing in these relations there is no need to consider sign no need to use sign convention here in all numeric in all relations of op take an instrument there is no need to use sign convention because these are not general relations this relation is valid for this particular instrument for this particular case it's not a general relation so don't need to consider sign here in the numerical you will put just the value of f and the value of d no sign convention no positive negative sign nothing similarly in the previous uh, formula that we have derived we don't use sign convention we will not use sign convention we we'll just put the numerical values as it is 